Okay, yes, yeah, so there are two, at least two nootropics that have been shown in some studies to affect an increase in growth hormone levels. And these work primarily, well they are alpha GPC, which is also a good choline source, and huperzine A, which is an acetylcholine esterase inhibitor, so that inhibits the breakdown of acetylcholine. So whilst it's not an acetylcholine source, it will lead to gently increased levels of acetylcholine, which is obviously that very important neurotransmitter, which we've discussed at length elsewhere. So we have alpha GPC and huperzine A. Now how do these increase growth hormone? Primarily by inhibiting that chemical or hormone which inhibits growth hormone. So they inhibit the inhibition, if you see what I mean, which allows you to, uh, it's a bit like um, beer, inhibits your social inhibition. You sort of, so you have a few and you go, wee like this. So you have some Ubazine or some Alpha GPC and suddenly your growth hormone's going, wee yeah, and it's coming out to play. Um, the effects are not massively uh, significant. You know, we're not talking like a, a four or five times over baseline increase here. Uh, for these specific amounts, you need to have a look yourself and do some research to see what those levels are. But it's not so much about the increase in growth hormone, it's more significant the inhibition of somatostatin because somatostatin is quite powerful. So you can think of it, if that's growth hormone, it only goes up by that much, but somatostatin goes down by that much. Although the growth hormone hasn't increased, the effects of growth hormone have increased. Do you see what I mean? Yeah? Okay, good. Now, why is growth hormone important? Well, the name growth hormone, in my opinion, is a bit of a misnomer because it doesn't really cause much growth, despite what bodybuilders and stuff will try and have you believe or will believe themselves. What it does do though, it does facilitate growth or repair of many different types of tissues in the body. Almost every cell in the body has a growth hormone receptor. Uh, the pituitary, which is that little tiny gland kind of directly behind the eyes, kind of about there-ish, can release quite a lot of growth hormone, but as we age, uh, the signal to let down growth hormone decreases, which is why, as an 80-year-old, you're gonna have markedly less growth hormone levels than uh, as a youth. Now, growth hormone is responsible for maintaining skin elasticity and thickness. Um, it's responsible partly for energy metabolism and release of uh, free fatty acids to use as energy. Uh, so it can dramatic, or, or reduction in growth hormone can dramatically affect a lot of body systems. Uh, for the younger person, a slight upregulation in growth hormone is gonna maintain leanness, uh, maintain tissue quality, and that's also tissue quality in joints. Um, for the, uh, the older person, uh, you know, osteoporosis is something you've probably heard of. It costs the National Health Service over a billion, dollars, billion pounds per year. Um, and yet, growth hormone is the primary hormone responsible for maintenance of bone mineral density. I think in future years we'll, we'll find out that the health service latches onto this. Uh, but in the meantime, if you can gently increase growth hormone levels, you may stand a chance of staving off bone mineral density loss. But don't place all your eggs in that basket, you see what I mean? As I say, we're talking percentage improvements here, not massive improvements.